Hey, I just wanted to uh, get on here and share a few thoughts about the uh, the question of looting and uh, what that what what that means in political terms. So I've seen a lot of uh, obviously like right wing people decrying the movement of looting, which is dying down a bit at this point. But uh, you know, as the as the in the height of the uh, Black Lives Matter protests like a few weeks ago, there was quite a bit of looting, most famously I think in uh, in New York City and Soho, there are a lot of uh, people looting, a lot of like uh, luxury commodity hype beast style stores and even here from my own local context in Montreal, uh, the first of the big protests that happened that there were a bunch of people looting, Steve's music got hit up quite bad and at the next protest, a lot of the big box stores downtown were actually boarded up. They, they did that in Toronto as well. They were boarding up these stores at the same time as they were uh, perpetuating this outside agitator myth, which is not something that I want to get into. You know, like uh, enough people have spoken about how how bullshit that is. But <coughs> obviously, from the conservative side, you have. A lot of people saying that uh, looting and like non-peaceful protesting in general, like looting as like stealing property, also just like destruction of property, is uh, taking away from the legitimacy of the protest movement. And um, you know, in the American context, you have your Second Amendment right to peacefully protest, and so long as you abide by certain laws, like a peaceful demonstration. Um, then you are protected and you have a legal constitutional right to p protest and like put on public demonstrations. Here in Canada, in Montreal specifically, in Quebec, uh, they, there's like a long history of protesting, especially in the past decade or so. And in the wake of the anti-austerity protests around 2015, they actually instituted a law where um, you are legally required to provide your protest route to the police beforehand and you need to get approval otherwise your protest is declared illegal and they have the right to uh, you know tear gas you pepper spray you club you arrest you kettle you etc but um, so obviously you have like a lot of uh, I mean it's not surprising that people on the right are going to be like a decrying looting and property damage because they value property more than human lives. They do not value the movement. They don't support it necessarily. Um, so obviously they're going to be uh, talking about how looting is, uh, and like rioting in general is taken a, taking away from the legitimacy of these movements. But you also, I, I was surprised to see the same kind of rhetoric I mean, I shouldn't say that as a surprise. Nothing really surprises me from... None of the discourse coming from the left surprises me anymore. Like, it's just so, like, toxic, some of the... Some of, the, what, uh, some of what passes for leftist discourse, but... Um, <clears throat> you had a lot of people on the ostensible left saying similar things about how uh, looting or non-peaceful protesting actually taking away from the legitimacy of these protest movements and of course that kind of uh, rhetoric goes hand in hand with the outside agitator, like the white outside ag agitator uh, myth, which is, it's all complete bullshit, but I want to talk a little bit about um, like the actual political meaning of looting and of rioting um, because when, when I first saw, like, videos in the first week of the protests of, like, uh, you know, like, kids walking out of Target with, like, carting out, like, flat screen TVs and, you know, whatever they want, I, I was filled with joy and elation, and my immediate response was, to see it as a profane act, like an act against capitalism, because 
like the fundamental law of capitalism, the the law that like the in the legal terms the law that is like essentially responsible for capitalism's ability to reproduce itself is the law of private property. Without private property, without private ownership of the means of production, you're not able to exploit workers and produce surplus value that goes into like a limited to the limited hands of a ruling class. So to break that law and to disrespect private property um, and to uh, like show how false the capitalist myth of scarcity is and show how there is in fact to, to reveal how there is in fact an abundance of commodities and of wealth in general by smashing the window of some store and taking what you want. To me, that is a very exciting possibility, and <clears throat> I've been thinking of it as like a kind of profane act, um, just because like it it really like goes against the entire like rational order of capitalism, like in its entire like functioning. It's the mythology that keeps it functioning of scarcity and like the need to you know sell your labor in order to get money in order to buy these commodities, and then also the uh, like myth of private property, which is really what it comes down to. I think. I mean, obviously, it's not a myth because it is materially real that there is private property, but it is a fiction. It is some kind of illusion that. Uh, the ruling class needs to perpetuate and uh, they need to use like violent police force in order to perpetuate but um i was i was thinking about it uh, like this idea of like uh, looting as a kind of profane act in terms of um or in relation to the concept of capitalist realism like that uh, famous mark fisher concepts where uh, like capitalism has become so pervasive and its ideology is so hegemonic and its mythology so like all encompassing that people within that system are simply unable to imagine a way out of not only a way out of capitalism but like a real alternative to capitalism and uh, for me like this uh, this idea of a uh, of looting as like a profane act, it is like puncturing through that kind of fable and revealing that in fact it is nothing but a fable. It is, it's just an illusion. It's, it's a lie that the ruling class are spinning in order to keep us uh, keep us all in line. And I mean, obviously, like the looting is not really like a sustained. Um, like a tactically kind of determined strategic kind of plan that was come up that like some you know vanguard party came up with and like determined to be was like the best strategy or whatever it's it's more of like a spontaneous like libidinal expression but for me like um it, it like without trying to get too utopian about it, like this idea of like the the fact that all these kids like all over the country, both countries, many countries, were able to show the falsity of the entire capitalist order and everything that it rests on, the the private property that it rests on, the um, the myth of like uh, scarcity that it rests on, and also the brutal, violent uh, suppression that it rests on by the by the police of the working class. Um, to me, like that action, that like period of actions, uh, was a really optimistic thing that kind of like uh, revealed for a moment, you know, that, that there is, in fact, an alternative to capitalism that uh, 
even even like some kids acting spontaneously were able to uh, like come up with an alternative to to like reveal that uh, you know the the whole system is built on a on a on a bunch of lies, a series of interco interconnected lies. And so that's all I'll say about that. Just a uh, few thoughts. You know, I've been I've been trying to think about it, and it's like this idea of the profane in like more rigorous terms. Been looking at uh, you know the great philosopher of the profane, Georges Bataille, and he has like some whole ideas of how like uh, profane and sacred fit into each other, and how like the social order is like a I don't really get it, but it's about like homogeneity and uh, heterogeneity and like the profane is something that does not fit into the rational order etc and like he had he like along with his like ridiculous secret society like founded this uh collage de sociologie profane or something i don't know what it was but and i've been enjoying reading it and on that note, I just I also want to give a, a brief channel update to people who are still with me. Uh, I've experienced some unfortunate uh, technical difficulties. Uh, my laptop is kaput for now. I mean, it's still covered by warranty, so hopefully I'll be able to get it fixed, but that's not going to be for a while. And I'm recording this video to test a, uh, a new uh, setup, like a workflow involving uh, Raspberry Pi and like uploading to another computer, etc. It's going to be a real pain in the ass, and it doesn't look like I'll be able to do any uh, any of the live readings that I've been doing. At least not for a while, and unless I figure out a way to do that. But uh, just wanted to share some thoughts and you know try to get this channel going and these vlogs going again, but. Uh, Hopefully this video works out and I'll see you next time.